Hello everybody and welcome to this brand new tutorial. So, I'm gonna skip all the formalities and get straight to the point. With the teeming arrival of Five Nights at Freddy's fifth installment, the sister location, um, I am expecting a brand new surge of fan-made Five Nights at Freddy's games. Now, there are a lot of those games already on the market. Most of them do this one same thing, where they follow a tutorial that tells how you can move your camera around in the room. Now. It's fine, but it is the most basic thing that really takes place in a Five Nights at Freddy's game. Now, what most of those games actually miss out on is repeating the same simulation that the original game does to make it appear three-dimensional. Now, uh, the original game uh, used a shader, uh, or at least something that acted like a shader, that manipulated what the uh, game was drawing to the screen to make it appear three-dimensional. Now, as you know, or as you should know, um, Five Nights at Freddy's is not a 3D game. It is a two-dimensional, uh, it is a collection of two-dimensional rendered images from a 3D uh, environment, from a modeling program, that are basically put together in a 2D engine. So, this is your standard mouse look around. Now, this is what the shader does. Huh? Huh? You have a way better. Wouldn't you say? way better than say this now this shader is less than 20 lines of code is extremely simple in fact you might as well use this shader uh, example to learn how to make your own shaders is it extremely simple so uh, before I'm gonna get into the game maker I'm gonna go ahead and switch to grid view and explain how the shader works now shaders are instructions that you give to your graphical uh, processor, your GPU, your graphics card, that tells how it should behave, how it should take the information and display it on the screen. So, if I'm going to enable the shader, as you can see, what it does uh, is it, it follows a very simple logic. It takes a pixel and it checks if that pixel is close to the center. If it's close to the center, uh, the closer or the further it is from the center, the further it will be uh, displayed from its original Y position. So as you can see, the bend, the displacement, is m way more extreme to the centers because it's, uh, it's c further away from, uh, from the center. And this works both ways. So the logic behind the shader is extremely simple. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, go back into Game Maker Studio and tell you how it's done. I'm going to minimize that, just in case I need it later. Here's my project. All I have is a background, a room, my shader, and my object. If I open up my room, I just have my uh, my background here, and there's my uh, my one object sitting right there. So that's fine. Now, this object uh, will be our control object in this instance. You will adapt this to your own, uh, uh, your own project as you see fit. So, uh, let's start with terminology. Uh, by default, Game Maker Studio draws everything to what is called the application surface. Now, the application surface can be seen as a canvas onto which the Game Maker game will draw your objects, your sprites, your decals, your blah 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 backgrounds, everything. So, what we need to do is, you know, we right now we want to. Uh, uh, instead of drawing the application surface right away, we want to apply a shader to it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to tell the application to stop drawing the application surface automatically so that we could first manipulate it and then draw it. Go into the create event, open it up, there's our single line application underscore surface underscore draw underscore enable will be set to false. This will disable Game Maker Studio from drawing the application surface. Now we're going to go into the step event, which really just contains my mouse movement. All I'm doing is checking if the mouse is close to the left side of the screen, then move the view to the right if the mouse is close to the right side of the screen, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. So very simple stuff. You can pause the video and uh, check what the code is. But, I mean, if you're, if you're going to be doing shader stuff, I'm pretty sure you can come up with your own thing that uh, suits your project better. And finally, we have the Draw GUI event, which is... Um, if you right click and uh, press add event, you have your draw functions. Now you have draw, draw GUI, draw begin, draw end, draw GUI begin, draw GUI end. This is just like in the step event, you have step, begin step, and end step. These just follow a certain sequence. First is begin step, then step, then end step. And this allows you to just draw 
uh, your stuff uh, uh, have an order where your stuff drawn uh, but what you will need is you will need to use the draw GUI end which is the uh, I believe it's one of the last um, uh, instances of the draw event so this uh, the things that are contained in the draw GUI end are one of the last things that are drawn in the application so you need to go into the draw event open up the code all we have here are three lines of code shader set name of the shader so we have uh, shd underscore test here it is right here so this is just the name of our shader this will set the shader uh, to be used in the object that's currently uh, running this code so since this object uh, is now drawing the application surface that means this shader will be applied to the application surface uh, you're not limited to the application surface by the way a game maker studio allows you to create your own surfaces which you can uh, work with like layers in Photoshop you can just draw different stuff to those different surfaces uh, like you can draw players to one surface uh, blood splatters to second you know as I said uh, and you can do some nifty stuff with those surfaces you can like rearrange them and you know well play uh, play around with them like with layers and you can also apply different shaders to different surfaces on their own so it doesn't just have to be application surface uh, application surface will apply itself to the entire application everything that's in this application which for this instance is really all that we need so uh, and then the last function is shader underscore reset this will basically uh, just disable the shader because first we need to enable the shader draw the stuff with the shader enabled and then we disable the shader and this can be used if you have several shaders and you want to toggle between them all right so this is fairly straightforward now the moment you have all been waiting for uh, not yet though <laughs> this is our shader uh, if you're gonna go right click on create shader on uh, the shader folder it will create a brand new shader we have shader uh, 7 and it will already give you some code in it now this code is what is known as a pass-through shader uh, essentially it basically just tells your graphics uh, processor okay nothing is happening I'm still here so there's still code but just take whatever's coming into the the GPU and just display it don't do anything to it right you need to have this if you have the shader engaged you do need to have this uh, because uh, you will need uh, otherwise it's gonna throw an error that you're you're engaging a shader but there's no code so what the hell do you want me to do right so you have two tabs here vertex shader and fragment shader uh, fragment shader is also known as pixel shader this is the code that runs for every single pixel and as you can see it's a simple pass through uh, pass through fragment shader and this is a simple pass through vertex shader uh, in two-dimensional games you will most likely not be using vertex shaders because they deal with um, editing vertices and uh, vertices is uh, what three-dimensional objects are made out of faces of uh, vertices connected by edges which make up faces or your polygons so unless you're making a 3d game in game maker studio you do not have to worry about vertex shaders so this is a simple pass-through shader uh, for vertex you can leave it the same and this is the uh, fragment shader now this pass through fragment shader is very simple to understand you have a vector 2 and vector 4 and you have the names of the um, uh, of the variables so here we have v underscore v uh, text coordinate uh, text court this is the texture coordinate and it's a vector 2 which means that inside of this variable name it contains two pieces of information the x and the Y location of a pixel. Now, it's very important to understand that uh, these variables do not represent the resolution of your uh, game. So if your resolution is 1280 by 720, X does not mean that uh, this particular pixel is somewhere within this resolution. Instead, uh, uh, shaders work with float values. So in this case, if we're talking about the very center pixel, on in your application uh, it will say this pixel is located at 0 0.5 0 0.5 in this case so this means that uh, 0 is the very left and 1 is the very right of the screen so 0 0.5 would mean the very center and this is why you work with um, 
uh, decimals because you can you can be really precise about it you could say a 0 0.545 you know this would be a really precise position on your screen so uh, this is why uh, uh, but this is how shaders work so in this case uh, you have vector 2 which will contain the x and y coordinates of the current pixel you're looking at and then you have vector 4 which will contain the color so it contains four pieces of information red value green value blue value and alpha value so you can literally use this to say okay every single red color will have to be transparent and you would use this as your source and you would write a shader that basically does that for you now the last thing is the actual main function where the code takes place uh, just gl underscore frac color uh, which is the output which is just, is just going to say equals to color of the pixel that we just took uh, uh, located at texture 2D so we're going to be using uh, the uh, coordinate V text coordinate so this is the XY and uh, uh, we're going to be using the GM underscore base texture uh, so this is a this is a simple pass through shader there's not nothing hard about it so let's finally go to the actual shader that I'm uh, trying to uh, to show you guys Okay, as you can see, vertex shader, same thing. You don't need this. Pass, pass it on. Here is our fragment shader. Uh, the logic behind it is very simple. I'm going to go through this with you right now. So first of all, same thing. We're going to record the position, uh, the position of the shader and the color of the shader. So vector two, vector four. Now I'm going to create a new vector, a uh, vector two for coordinates. Uh, now the coordinates will mean the brand new coordinates after the pixels have been adjusted. So we're going to be taking the original uh, coordinates, doing some uh, some stuff with it, and then we're going to write the result to the new coordinates. And this will be used uh, to tell the shader where to draw the pixel or to tell the graphics card. Next, we have the float. It's important. We're working with floats in the shader. Uh, pixel distance X and float pixel distance Y. And I'll tell you how to use it. Uh, how it's going to be used in a second. Uh, then it's going to be off. Uh, we have a float offset, which is uh, used uh, to uh, to determine what how just by how much we have to offset each pixel, and we have float direction. And direction is um, important to know into which direction we're going to be bending the pixel because. Uh, uh, we don't want to bend them all downwards. If it's above the center of the screen, uh, as you see right here, if if the pixel above the center, we obviously want to bend it upwards instead of bending it downwards. If it's below the screen center, then we're gonna be bend it. Uh, we're gonna bend it downwards. So this is very important. Otherwise, your entire screen is gonna look like it's bending downwards, which is not very convincing. <laughs> so uh, we don't need this. Here we go. First of all we need to determine what is the distance of the current pixel. As I said, I keep repeating this, this is per pixel code. This code goes uh, be, is being calculated for every single pixel on the screen. Uh, pixel distance x and pixel distance y. So here's our distance uh, uh, function. Uh, it was actually really nice of YoYo Games to make a shader editor that actually recognizes some of these functions. It's really useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to say what is the distance between the center of the screen, so 0 0.5 along the x-axis, and the current x position of uh, the uh, current pixel texture coordinate. So we're going to say v underscore v text chord dot x, which will retrieve the first value, the x value of the texture. And then we're going to do the same thing for y. How far is this uh, pixel from the... A y, the center of the uh, screen along the y-axis. Now, we're going to determine the offset. The offset will uh, be used to display our pixel. So the offset variable will contain the value uh, by how much we have to display uh, displace the pixel. So we will take our brand new value that we received uh, about our x distance. So uh, as as I said in the thing, the further the pixel is from the center, the more uh, 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 the uh, more the offset is going to have to take place. So uh, the center over here will be zero because we're right in the center. The further we go, uh, let's say this will be like 0 0.7 or whatever. Uh, so we get the distance, 
and we take only a fraction of it. So we don't need to use the entire distance. We're going to use only uh, 0.2 of the total value. So we decrease that value and then we're going to multiply it by y. Now, uh, this also means, uh, as you can see, it, it works together that the, the further the object is from the y location, the more the y displacement is going to take place. So x displacement and y displacement both work uh, together. Now, after that, we're going to go back to our code. Uh, this is where we determine the direction. So we're going to, uh, once again, we say if current pixel that's being looked at, uh, if it's y, um, uh, if it's y value is uh, above or equals to the center, so or if it's below the center, then our direction is one. So it's going to be uh, just um, Oh my god, it's going to be uh, displayed in one direction. Uh, if it's, however, above 0 0.5, then it's going to display into the other direction. And as you can see by our final piece, uh, we say coordinates. So this is a brand new coordinate set uh, that we're going to be giving the pixel uh, to be drawn in. And we have to make it into a vector too. Uh, so that vector 2 is going to contain the original x position and it's going to contain a brand new modified y position that incorporates the offset right so as you can see we're multiplying it by 8 let's uh, let's go ahead and multiply it by let's say 30 let's go let's go insane let's uh, try this out what's gonna happen so that value right there will really uh, determine the intensity of the bend oh god I kinda wanna see what it's like now that's gonna be terrible terrible and it gave me an error error combined fragment shader I forgot something I forgot something uh, line 6 line 6 syntax error where is What did I fuck up? Oh, did I? Hold on a second. Let me go back to 3.0. It's always an embarrassing. I never like doing life coding. Because whenever you fuck that up, uh, it just it just looks bad. <laughs> it looks really bad. Why? What do you want from me? Shader. Oh! Good lord. It's the... I'm sorry, people. It's the shader that I created to explain how blank shaders work. Because I'm an idiot. Even though it doesn't use that shader, it still complains about it. My fault. Sorry. Okay, let's go back to uh, fragment shader. Render this now. Nope. Don't render this now. I want to put that value back to 30. It was going so well. I thought it was going to be a clean tutorial. God damn it. I hate when this happens. This is why I don't do live coding. I know I will fuck it up. And 70% it, it, of the video is going to be just me trying to fix my fuck up. Anyways, waiting. There we go. Wow. Holy sh <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Well, it it you know, it it, it kind of does the job maybe sort of. But you know what I mean by uh this uh by this technique now. So we're going to go back to 30. So now we have received the texture coordinates equals vector 2 uh, which contains the x and the y uh, with the modified value so now we can do that exact same piece of code that was in the beginning um, in the blank shader this is our output color multiplied by the uh, or color and the position and uh, here's our new text coordinates so if we're gonna take this and put this here it's basically gonna be again a pass-through shader it's just going to take whatever was coming in and spew it right back out. In this case, we're sending a modified uh, modified position. And that that's pretty much it. That is all there is to the shader. Uh, not much of work there done. It's, uh, it's very simple. So, wow, this is a 20-minute tutorial. Holy shit. I kind of wish it was shorter, but 
if I wanted to be short, I could just upload the file. But you know what? I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be convenient. Because I know there's a lot of people who go on these tutorials and they just ask for the project files and hope they just po open the files and shove them in the project and hope that they're going to work. And if it doesn't work, they're just going to start posting questions on the forums like, this thing doesn't work. To which we'll usually reply, we don't spoon feed. And did you look in the file? Okay. I hope you guys have liked this tutorial. That now you can do the whole Five Nights at Freddy's screen bending share. Uh, shader and uh, you can uh, make your fan-made game look infinitely better But if you actually learn something from this tutorial You can actually now code your own basic shaders Which is something that I'm actually looking forward to do in our tag rise in my video game that I'm working on uh, Which is uh, right about the time I could um, Probably shamelessly cross promote my game Here it is our tag rise super fun time it's a two-dimensional game and I'm actually looking forward to making some shaders for this game since I figured out how to do shaders here and since it's not really all that hard um, I kind of I really want to make some really funky looking shaders for this game but anyways currently our tag rise is on Steam Greenlight you can go vote for it uh, we are currently at about 256 votes yes so we're, uh, we got quite a ways to go but if you can vote for it uh, that will be of great help. Also, check out the link down in the description for my Patreon account where you can donate and see me produce more tutorials or even possibly do some private tutoring, uh, which is always an option. Uh, my, uh, my Patreon account is set up to help me fund these games, to uh, help me develop these games because at some point I have a second game on Steam Greenlight uh, called Way Home. It has been greenlit, but I can't release it right now. Not yet. It has not been... Uh, it's been, whoops, uh, wrong way, here we go, it has been a year since I've put it up on Greenlight, it's been Greenlit, but it's a year old project, so I can't upload it now, it's not going to do too well, which means I need to get some hardware, some uh, equipment, and I also need to get some actors to voice act and to do motion capture for this project, uh, so, uh, Leave a comment, leave a like, leave a subscription. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you in whatever the hell I want to um, make a video about next. All right, see ya. Oh, if you have any subscription, uh, um, bleh, if you have any suggestions, post them in the cons uh, in the comment section below, or I have a video titled "What You'd Like Me to Do Next." Uh, it's on my front page of my uh, YouTube account, so you can just ask me, you know, what you want to see next, and I'll I'll see what I can do about it. No guarantees, but I'll see what I can do about it. All right, peace out. Until